La 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 la. I see these guys right here. They're the ones that should be talking about this, not me. Although it is marked for audio files because there's an actual thing. Um, hi, I'm your host, Zeus Pantera, Wallpaper in the Horde, and we're going to talk about the Lynx Hilo, which is an analog to digital, digital to digital, and digital to analog router converter, analog VU having, it, it's, it's $3,000. Goodbye. No one here needs one of these. Pretty much sure no one needs one of these. Even Zeos, with all this shit, probably doesn't need one of these. Blue Core Jazz, falling in love. Okay, so, the front of this unit is a power button, a quarter inch headphone jack, a knob with a push button, and a touch screen. The end. The back is where you start going like, oh, what does it do? I'm just gonna walk around because I'm not unplugging all that stuff. It's just, 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 just made my life a living hell. Um, there's a battery in for nine to 18 volts, which indicates that you would be able to use this on a battery pack for, I guess, doing DJing in the middle of a field. I don't know. Here's your input. How do I describe this? Okay. So here's a USB port. Here's an L slot expansion port. This will actually come out. You could take that unit out and you could add uh, 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 what the fuck's the one with the D? Da Vinci? W whatever the d different slots for professional audio gear, you could have USB for PC, which is what this one has. If you plug this into a computer, it could either be 8 or 16 channels of audio, according to the PC. Thus, I didn't plug it into the PC. Because my poor old laptop. So that's an important thing, that you could upgrade this with the expansion slot to cover Dante. Dante, I got it. Dante was the digital one. Um, we have line in, left and right, coming from musician Pegasus. Yeah, Andromeda? No, Pegasus. Andromeda's the amp. Then we have, so you have in and outs. All right, this whole unit, the reason that there's two girls connecting is because this has ins and outs for everything. And you can pick them up and move them around and make them touch or not touch, whatever you want to do. So you've got line in and out XLRs. Boom, line in and out XLRs. You've got monitor outs, which are a quarter inch. Um, I bought, I actually physically had to buy quarter inch TRS for another project I'm doing, which we've got monitoring with these Mackie MR264s. MR624s, that's what it is. Then we've got AES in and out. AES in and out is basically coaxial digital but in XLR form, so you can run it much longer distances. I am hooked up currently using this beautiful RI cable. I'll link to them every once in a while, just because they sent it to me and I'm like, they're like, do you want it? And I'm like, yes. So you have AS in and out. You've got coaxial digital in and out. You've got fiber optic in and out. I've got the coaxial digital in and outs actually working. Uh, coming from the singular, that's the source, going in, going out and going to the x TA22. You have a word clock. I used to call it world clock. I kind of still want to call it world clock, but it's a word clock, which is the reclocking mechanism that does the timing between all your devices. And although nothing else has one of those plugged into it, I am using the word clock from the Singzer SU6 again into it just to see what it would do. And it does accept it and it's, it's using it just fine. And then there's your AS out and there's your word clock out. So it's got word clock in and out, coaxial in and out, spitif in and out, fiber optic. AS in and out, monitor out is the only thing that's just out, USB in is the only thing that's just in, and we walk around the unit. <sighs> I've been putting this off because I knew that the learning curve in this was not gonna be like, oh, I instantaneously knew how to work it. I'm gonna lower my seat even. We're up on a um, sound drive stand because it's, it's all screen. And I've got KPH 40s plugged into the headphone out because if they explode, they're $40. I've got the Thyodio Wraiths plugged into the TA22 because if they explode, I have a second pair. And I've got my beautiful Neumann NDH30s, which if they explode, please don't plug into the topping LA90. So this is the line out. The Pegasus is the line in. The Singzer is doing both the word clock and the coaxial in and the AES in. 
And let's talk about this. So we tap the screen, you get four choices. If you were just buying this to be cool and pretty, you have four choices. You could have the analog VUs, you could have RTA, which is real-time analysis, and you could pick your input here, digital in or line in. Let's look at the line in. You want to analog, you want to real-time analyze. Hold on. You want to change the color of it. Do you want to adjust the trim so it's like, like right now zero is pretty low, but if you wanted to bump it up so you could actually see what the frequencies are doing, you could do that there. Got a 12 decibel bump. We can come out of that. We can go to the horizontal where you can choose either like here. You could have digital in or let's say monitor out, which is currently doing that. And you're line in down here. The monitors are currently off even though they're on, but it's showing you we're, we're just under three decibels peak. And then line in is here. We could change it from line into digital in. It's very interesting. So now last one is all IO. We don't even light up half the screen because here's USB record, here's USB play, here's ADAT in and ADAT out. You could have either SPDIF or ADAT. Uh, ADAT is a much more a pro level format of digital audio tape. It's like digital audio tape, but I think they kept it because it's something else now. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. But you could see right here we have our I panel, which is line and digital, the only two things that are getting input. Because we've got the DAC, and we've got the coaxial digital. And it, it counts all digital inputs as one, and you have to choose. So either you get coaxial digital or you get AES. I think USB would be treated separately. And then you have your outputs. So the line output is currently down all the way. The monitor output is on, but it's but the master is at zero. There's a master volume that's that's here. See, I lower all that and they all go down. Ooh. We're getting to it. Trust me, we're fucking getting to it. And then you have line, mon, PHNS, AES, coax, and optical. What the hell's P phones? PHNS. I've never seen anyone abbreviate phones PHNS. I feel like I could put that on a t-shirt. So... That's the four that you get to basically choose from up here. You have to see select meter, master off, uh, works PC, which I hope he doesn't need me to fuck that up because we're just going to go quickly to the scenes menu. So this unit can mix and match and level all those connectors in the back all the time. And you can actually save a scene from any of these. So like the way it is currently, the way I've set it up, the way Zeos has it set up, I could save it and overwrite one of his other ones. He's currently got, the owner of this unit has King Kong headphone from UA Apol. I have no idea what that means. Then he has 2.1 line out, 3.4 monitor phones, play routed one to one, play one to two, all outputs. So he could just go to the scene and load it. So if you had a desk, so fucking confusing that you've got three sets of monitors and you've got nine inputs and you got this, but you need the, the volume to be there. You could just save it. And when it's up, oh, it's time to do my Twitch live streams and I got to set up, a, just go to see, load it and it changes everything. I wasn't fucking with this stuff as much as I could because it's going to be a nightmare to, to redo it. And you have 40 for one and you have word clock is being used instead of the internal clock. I'm glad I finally got to use that thing. Um, settings, back button, monitoring and routing. These are pretty much... Once you're in something, like that becomes the back button. So we go to monitoring, that becomes the back button. Go to routing, that becomes the back button. Take this off of here and just go to like RTA. I like RTA with the colors, hold on. There you go, of the digital in. Beautiful, let's take that down a notch. To nine, no, lower than that, six. Actually, digital in shouldn't need any bumping because that, be that should be pure coming off of this, this tech Techmaster PEB, you can see the bass lines are going nuts. So, I guess I'll go settings. We already did scenes, but settings, uh, line in trim and line out trim, which is fucking weird because you would think if you were trimming the volume down, you would set a negative, but it's a positive. And I needed to set this because it was at zero and I was getting nothing but distortion. I thought I blew up my Aries 2 DAC. I was getting nothing but distortion and I had to drop it at to a I had to drop it down to a plus 18 dBU, which was fucking weird. And then it was it was fine. Um, so you have your audio settings there. Here's your audio settings. Left line in 
trim and line out trim, optical out mode, SPDIF or ADAT, like I was talking about earlier, your SRC, which is a sampling rate converter, it's a, you have a choice of a thousand to one or or just on or off. So we could leave that on, I'm gonna leave it on. Your digital source in, you could here's you have to choose either SPDIF, optical, coax or AS. I have it on AES because why not? I never got to use that either. Um, source sync world clock or internal or digital in. So it'll actually try to get the world clock off of your fiber optic or SPDIF or ADAT if it's enabled. But I'm having the wor word clock uh, come in externally. And your sampling rate is basically fixed. That's why it's grayed out. And then you got a system and you have the backlight, which is as bright as it gets. They, they show you beautiful pictures of this thing and animations of it on the website. Like, look at that. Looks fantastic. This unit, this is a beat up unit. It's all misaligned and it's scratched and it's dented and it's just scuffed. But I don't think the screen's been damaged and it does not look as nice as that. This is an old school screen. This is not a screen like on a phone. This screen is like a, a what the hell is it called? When you have to touch it and press it in. It's a nice one, but it ain't the newest, most modern glass screen. This shit feels dated. And it could be brighter, too. And it could be trimmed better, too. So you get your backlight, you get your rotary control settings, what the what this knob does. And it took me for fucking ever because I figured out you can enable multiple things. So you turn the knob and it's like, why is everything fucking changing all at once? I don't want it to change anything but the master out. Because I was switching things and the fucking speakers were at full tilt, like five. That's why this is on the desk. This is the um, the kilowatt edge where I can turn on and off the unit. So I actually have the speakers plugged into it because I had to turn the speakers off in like emergencies. But once I figured out how to work around that, I didn't bother me as much. So master out is all I really want to deal with. Let's get the fuck out of there. You calibrate the touchscreen, factory defaults, USB mode. You only have the choice between eight channel and 16 channel. You can't make this a two channel unit. You're either mixing for surround sound, or you're mixing for Atmos, or you're mixing for like multiple piece bands and stuff like that. You can switch the language out of English <laughs> to, to that. No, I don't want to do that ever, but even joke. And your digital in status is consumer. I think if I change to ADAT, it would then no longer be that. It would not be consumer system. So backing out of this, there's your fucking settings. Scenes we discussed already. You could save the scene, you could undo changes. Um, monitoring, this is the, this is the part where it's just like, okay, so we're digital in, monitor out, master off, that's fine, that's, that's, okay, I'm bringing the master all the way up, we're getting to it, we're getting to it, okay, routing, this is a screen you're going to spend most of your time in on this, because this has three volume controls. You get to pick your input and your output. The whole left side is input, the whole right side is output. You wanna change it from stereo to just the right channel to just the left channel to summed mono, you could do that. You can mute things, you can S things. I don't know what S means. I looked. It does, if you're buying this, you're gonna do a lot more reading than I did. I'm just trying to get it to so currently, the way this is working is the line in, which is the analog input there, is going to the headphones because the phones are selected. And we have this volume control here, which doesn't work. If I lower that down to 92, it doesn't make a difference. I don't understand why it doesn't, but it doesn't. If we press this in, we now have the master volume, which is set to zero, which means maximum volume. We press it again, we get this knob and that And now I'm listening to the headphone out on this, which I've put two or three headphones into it. It's a pretty solid fucking headphone amp. I mean, it's a $3,000 box, so it should do something. We'll play the non off vocal version. Oh. One Punch Man, anyone? So now here's what I figured out to do. Again, this is just me. You could have all the things that I hooked up to this play all at once, and then you could have the, the master raise and lower the volume. That doesn't make any sense. Instead, I'd rather be in this screen and then pick the thing I want, lower the, lower the phones, phones all the way down, go to line out, 
Turn the volume up. Change songs now. Now I'm, gonna, I'm fixing the volume on this and I'm just gonna control it here. So let's see what's the maximum. So now I'm using the digital in, which I can mute. The digital in to the line out, zero, zero. If I wanted to switch to the line in, now the line is playing. And it does sound different. The DAC sounds different. And now I have both of them on. Because of course you can mix them together and matrix them together. So now it's playing the analog line in from an r 2 DAC, which is usually slightly delayed, and then using its own internal digital to analog converter from the digital in. And you can hear how fucking weird that sounds because it's got both playing. So I shut off the digital. You have to, it's weird. You have to like touch the digital to go red that mutes it. And you can touch the line and then it's just, all these are muted. They're never off. They're just either they're muted or they're not muted. And it's got USBs for fucking days, which are not disabled. Do, that's muted, that's muted. That's gotta be muted and then you can click that, okay. Because then you can pick, like here, if I hit the USB button here, it's like, do you want USB 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 fucking USBs. That's why I didn't plug the USB into this. You can see that the screen is just not responsive as you push it. Okay, so now I've just got line in to the line out. And I'm, if I, if I, so this is actually adjusting the volume now. Okay, hold on. I make it digital. Oh, it does work. I don't know why it didn't work seconds ago. Okay, fine. It's fine. So you could either adjust the input volume or the output volume. I'd prefer the output volume. So now I can lower that back down to zero. Now we can go to monitor out. Monitor out is a separate TRS XLRs in the back of the unit. They're going to the monitors, the studio monitors. We're finally going to use studio monitors to monitor something. I don't want to get copyrights, but I'm going to put the line in on now. I love that like doubling delay that you get with two DACs going into it, or two separate timings. This is uh, Kung Fu World Champion, by the way, by Hiromi Iuhara. E U H A R A. Uh, shut off the line or mute the line in. And now we have just one. And now I could also do Spitif Coaxel, which is this unit. So I, we've, we've intercepted the digital in, and now we have, I turned it up to full, because now I have a volume control here. And now we're controlling this. So now, I think I've gone over most of the stuff that this can do. Your routing is very, it's, once you've got the hang of the press and then unpress and then press, and then the volumes are here, but not the master, like the master volume hasn't changed. If I turn the volume, if I leave that at zero and I press this in, it goes input volume, master volume, output volume. I could very easily go to the master volume, lower it down, and then go here and then be like, spit of coax, 100. Phones, 33. Line out, actually it has a volume control here, so 100. Monitor out, keep it real low, 50 below. And then get the fuck out of this, go back to this, and now the master volume Everything's working now. Now everything's fucking working all at once. This thing is a very specific person. If you're watching this and you're fucking excited and you're like, oh my god, oh my god, I could I could monitor things and I could do analog view. Oh my god, they're nailed to the fucking top. That's what a monitor out is currently low. Um, we want line in. So our line ins versus our digital ins. There you can see the digital ins peaking at zero because it's digital and I've got that trimmed. And it's like, oh, I'm just rubbing my fucking eyes. I get it. I get, I understand the purpose of this unit. I don't know if you, the consumer, 
regular old consumer, audiophile consumer, guys with a bunch of amps and stuff like this, I don't think we need this level of mixing and matching. And you can't apply an EQ either. It's not like a, um, it's not like the RME ADI-2, which I will link in the description. Uh, if you remember my review of the RME ADI-2, it was, that was a thing. That thing was probably nearly as complicated as this, way less actually going into um, what it did. Way less going into it, but that could actually do equalization curves and you can set the Q values. So this is just meant to be a pure pass-through. You give it a fuck ton of sources and you can manipulate them to a fuck ton of outputs. And you could do that, you could convert digital to analog, analog to digital. You know, I, I, I could literally take the, I took the line in. One of the things I did is I took the line in, only the li line in, we, we mute the digital, mute the digital, line in, take the line in, and we went to the spit of coaxial. Oh, I have to change it on that one, not this one. So now, I put that up, and then I put up the master. So now this, I'm now feeding this digital, the monitors are playing, I gotta go to the monitor out. You can just touch the screen also, and you can do line out and touch the screen. So, and the phones are playing, everything's playing. So now I'm taking an analog input, putting it in this box, it's converting it to digital, pushing it out through spit of coaxial into this unit, and this thing's DAC is re reevaluating it and pushing it back out. That's, that's a, that, that is a thing. I've muted that now because I touched it twice. You have to have, you, I don't want to say this about my, my, my user base, but you need to be special needs. If you're special needs, because you have, you need this box because you have very, very special needs. You have a special need to take things from analog and digital and digital to analog and analog to analog and digital to digital and fuck with it. And you're going to spend three fucking G's on it. Is it three, three large? I, I forget all my, my like eighties Italian action fucking crime dramas. Like, I put five G's on it. It's just G's, right? If I put five large, that's 500. Five big ones? What's five big ones? I don't know. Either way, this thing is three grand. I would hope that there'd be a, a, a more updated screen put on it. I feel like it's going to do all the same jobs it's been doing. Like, they even show you here, like, you could actually demo the metering versus the routing versus the monitoring versus the scene setup versus the setting. That's nice. More, more need this. More places that have complicated units need to just show you exactly what you're getting so you don't have to watch Zeos be an asshole on the internet. You can connect apps and do the 16 channel thing. You get free connected applications, a high level remote for iPad, desktop. So yeah, you could literally go nuts with this thing and just be wandering around and then control your stuff. I could see it being useful in some sort of applications of audiophilia. In fact, wait a second, where was that? There was a page somewhere. I don't remember if it was here or somewhere else, but it was like showing it, oh, here you go. Well, who is it for? And it explains it's for professionals. So mastering on an analog chain and it literally shows you different diagrams. Mixing with multiple speakers, location sound recording, voice recordings and overdubbing, audio file listing and it shows two speaker rooms, A and B, a digital CD player using optical in, you have the headphones in the unit, and you have a computer. So, and then archiving, archival purposes. You have a, a turntable into the line in, and you have speakers in room A for that, and you headphone and then computer to record. Like, I like it. I don't know who's gonna want it. I don't know what else this company sells. This company sells boards, PCI Express boards. And it's like, oh God, please no. Please no. Here's the highlight remote. There's the remote app. I want to make it look like a, like a thing you could drag. Like, I get it. Like, we're used to seeing real mixers, but I don't want to click and drag a mouse on a thing. I mean, I guess you could. It's free. Windows and Mac have from Lix that allows extensive control when using this thing. I wonder if you could hack that to work 
with like internal software, just internally. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna keep droning on about this. I've had this from the guy for way too long. I, I literally turned it on, saw that, and was so intimidated. I'm like, uh, 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 yeah, I'll get to that review. And then it sat here for three months. So I'm at that review now. I'm at it. I'm finally there. I spent the time. I spent the whole morning in my newly heated basement. Thanks to Pioneer Mini Split. They sent me out the units free of charge. It's just been a fucking nightmare installing them. And by fucking nightmare, I mean like it's doable. You just have to have a couple. You have to know someone who could help you. And you got to have a couple tools. You got to have the, the, the practice is what you I can't sell you the practice. All you can do is watch my videos on the second channel. But yeah, there's a 36,000 BTU three ton heater up on the wall there next i'll just take a walk i'm done with this wallpaper in the description thank you for the person who sent this out Look how damaged it is um it's actually gonna be hold on a second there we go now we can walk across the basement and it'll actually adjust the colors um patreon subscribe star support this channel here's the power usage of the mini split it is ramping up to like 2200 watts right now to to try to keep it cool and are warm in here with 20 degrees outside but um patreon subscribe to support this channel uh you can see reviews early participate in yard sales and get to loss of sound demos which i'm trying to get a couple of reviews done so i can clear that desk do more headphone demos and then i'm going to do some speaker demos i still got to do the cali in fives a couple other ones over there which i get to use any music i want in my playlist by the way you see this wallpaper i had to add that bit it ended there and i had to add that no one ever noticed but I do a lot of work for those wallpapers. Anyway, here's my Pioneer 36,000 affiliate link to them. And thank you for them for sponsoring my house. And, and oh God, the air, the warm air, the warm air, everybody. You have no idea how cold it's been down here. It's been 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it is currently 66 degrees Fahrenheit. It says 68, but it's sort of like leveled. Um, so yeah, thanks to my sponsor, Pioneer Mini Split. Special thanks to patrons. Uh, again, see your early participate in yard sales, which I got to ship all the yard sale stuff. That has to go. Um, sound demos, which are only available now to supporters because fuck YouTube and they're bullshit, bullshit. Hi, YouTube. Thank you. Please keep paying me and don't take my money back. Did you hear this thing where they can now charge back if a video that you released ever um, gets like demonetized? They could actually take back the money that they gave to you from your bank account. Look it up. It's fucking wild. Um, yeah, and hi guides. And don't forget the $10 tier where you could ask me any questions uh, on Telegram, where I don't really ask questions or, or answer questions uh, out there in the world because there's too many. But if you're into that $10 t uh, Telegram chat, I'll answer any questions you want. And you also get into a lifetime swap me channel where you get to buy, sell, and trade gear. And yeah, we're gonna, we got a lot of shit coming up. 2023 has just begun and I'm already exhausted. So I'm gonna go do some sound demos. It's gonna be fucking sweet. And I'll, in the warmth, the warmth, the warmth, and I will talk to you all in the next one. Oh, God.